having such a renowned international artist exhibiting in Sheffield, it's going to make people curious, like, well, why Sheffield and what else is there here to see? I think he chose to put a spotlight on Sheffield just because it was where he sort of came up and to, and to give something back and just to show what a brilliant place Sheffield is. This is where it started, these are where the ideas came from. People want to see his work. This show is just a prime example of the pull that Flem has. So we're at Eyewitness Works on Milton Street, the home of the Mausoleum of the Giants. This all came about as part of a, a wider project called Cultural Destinations. Getting people to think differently about Sheffield, yeah. and getting people to come here for our culture. We export cultural yeah. producers yeah. fantastically in this city and it was about getting people who are really well known internationally back to the city yeah. to bring their international visitors to the city and yet to also expose them to a Sheffield audience that hadn't really met them before. The world you're entering is the world of the giants. The Mosley of the Giants means it's their final resting place. You'll never see this again. It will never be brought back together. It will, they will disappear or vanish into the ether. The University of Sheffield Culture Consortium and the Council received Arts Council funding to bring him back to Sheffield to do his first major international one-man show. I kind of didn't know what to expect, but I was thinking it might be something crazy, definitely met sort of any expectations I had, yeah. It's so much bigger and more impressive to see in real life, it really is amazing. The way that Flem's managed to completely um, incorporate parts of the building into the artwork has really, really caught people's imagination. Uh, from the press and the giant leaning against it right yeah. through to my favourite piece, uh, which is his telescope. Not many people see it or spot it. Flem always puts a telescope in his work and he's managed to find an air duct and create that telescope. And not many people see it, but everybody knows it's here. And quite often when you're in the space, people come up to you and ask where it is and can you show them. So it was a long queue, really long. We wait for around three hours. Yeah, it's worth waiting. I'm amazed. It's an incredible experience, I believe. And all the people in Sheffield and all around should see that. When Flem first started working down here, he was um, only working on paper, mostly with uh, dip pens and bits and pieces. Uh, from that, he kind of developed into the colour stuff and the other bits and pieces which is still around the building. The colour started to disappear more and more to the point where we end up with the kind of classic black and white look that we have these days. Flem's connection with Sheffield is about his development from paper to wall. He was here for 10, 15 years. Um, and his kind of cusping from being a sort of classically trained fine artist to more of kind of large scale wall artist was certainly during his period in Sheffield. His paintings are extremely, extremely detailed. I still have found new and interesting elements. There's always a narrative in it and it's a fantasy-like narrative and that's what I really like. For as long as I can remember, I've seen his characters around the city just doing quirky things and always kind of interacting with the buildings that they're painted on rather than being just painted on. It's like bumping into a friendly face when you see one of his pieces. Derelict buildings, warehouses, painting all over, all over the place and people just really, really got behind him and uh, celebrating. I love working to my means in Sheffield. It's a city where opportunities can happen, but then it also has the Peak District on its doorstep for creative people like myself that are influenced by nature and, and landscape. You couldn't ask for anything else. So for the exhibition, Flem asked me to make a tombstone because it's a mausoleum. It's introducing you to the exhibition. So he gave me some the, le the letters on a small piece of paper and I blew them up and formalised them but still trying to retain sort of his style because they're his, they're his letters. It was quite late on in the process so uh, he 
actually <laughs> at some point felt it was like a tombstone for him. The Flem beer came about just through being introduced to one of Flem's team. It was a pleasure to be able to work with such a renowned artist. And it was just done purely out of, we both have a passion for beer. It was a big, strong, giant stout to go with the giant exhibition. One little boy who was four came with his mums, experienced the giants, went back to nursery and told everybody in nursery about it. So the whole nursery is coming tomorrow and they've already planned where they're making their giants in their nursery, where the legs are going to go, its body's going to go and how the arms are going to go out the window. So I think it's really, really inspired another generation. Before coming here, I thought they were a bit scary at first. My favourite is the monster with its tongue whirling out. I think when I get home, I might try and do something similar. I think that Flem's work really does inform what I do as a, an artist and animator. Um, yeah, I'd say he's a great role model for anyone looking to get into drawing something in a cartoony way, especially animation and comic drawing. And him getting his start in Sheffield is really something that it makes you think, well, you can do it, I can do it. It's something where, you know, it's almost like a role model in that sense that, like, if he can succeed in doing these great art, these great pieces of art, then surely I can as well. Thinking about how Flem is, is enormous outside of Sheffield, you know, the work he did in Toronto, New Zealand. I think the people of Sheffield feel absolutely blessed. Yes. Actually, it's been for them, and at the same time, it's positioning Sheffield nationally and internationally, I think, with this one, as, as a city of culture. He's definitely proud of his city. If a, a city invests in one of their local artists, maintains the, the bond with Flem, and Flem, of course, also with the city. The show is probably one of the best things I've ever experienced in my life. And the, the work and effort he put into it just shows in that room. And seeing the reaction of everyone entering is, is priceless. And it was incredible. Yeah, we came all the way from New York for it. I've been to the UK a few times. This is the first time uh, in Sheffield. And um, so far, our trip here has been, has been incredible. I think people would want to visit Sheffield just because it's a big city, but it feels small and it feels personal. We're so close to the Peak District and, and some of the most beautiful bits of the Peak District you can walk to. The Peak District being on the doorstep, it gives you the feeling that you can escape city life whenever you feel like it. For me and a lot of creative people, it's a huge reset button. You're in the most beautiful countryside, some of the best in the, in, the, in the world. To be able to put more and more on the spotlight would be an incredible thing for Sheffield to showcase. It's got a really exciting future. There's so many creative, talented people and businesses around. People joining forces to create something bigger. I think it's really building up a reputation as being a place where there's a lot of creative people. There's always something going on. I think it's one of those places where you sort of scratch beneath the surface and you find a great kind of microcosm of, of all sorts.